Welcome back, fellow geeks, to A Geek Named Bob Presents 100 Days of Horror, Day 2. According to some people who will not be named, I'm already kind of cheating on the concept with today's review, which is of the new Castlevania series from Netflix. It's a television series, you say. But, it's a television series of four episodes, totaling about an hour and 43 minutes. And it's really essentially a pilot to a later series that's going to come out next year, which is going to have eight episodes, and we'll focus more on what you actually expect to get out of Castlevania. Castlevania is a game series which I've played as a child and again as an adult with my NES Classic, but I've only really played the first three and some of Castlevania 4 on the Super Nintendo, and I can't wait to play it again with my SNES Classic in a few months. God, I hope I get one. God, I hope I get one. Castlevania is based upon Dracula's Curse, the third of the series, which came out on the Nintendo Entertainment System in 1989. One of the games I have played, so I was able to realize that this is exactly where we were going. I was like, wait, these characters seem familiar. They aren't seem to be ones from later games, which I haven't played, which I've won these days. I will go back and check out the rest of the series and catch up to, like, what, 30, 40, 89 games. I don't know. I'll look it up later. So if we treat it as a pilot movie, we definitely get a lot more out of it than if we treat it as an actual television show or a full-length film, because it's really just setting up what we're going to see next year when Castlevania Season 2 comes out. Instead, we get we get our characters and we get our setup, but we don't actually get Dracula doing anything truly with the Trevor Belmont. As I said, it's a prologue, so we're not going to get where things you expect of Trevor Belmont fighting Dracula, hordes of the undead. Instead, we get kind of Dracula side. Dracula's wife is killed by a bunch of priests who then make him really angry so he gives him a warning you have one year to leave this town otherwise I'm gonna kill everyone in Transylvania. They don't so he sets his curse upon them so that's the Dracula's curse of the title of the video game. So when we have this as a setup we kind of are on Dracula's side. The priest murder his wife because she's a scientist she came to meet him because she wanted to learn more about science and not basic remedies and cures. She wanted to really help the people there she lived with. Instead, the church balked at this and burned her at the stake, causing this said curse. So I mean, the whole first episode has to deal with this setup. So by the end of the episode, you're like, yeah, Dracula, you're mad, and it's we see why. So when we actually meet the heroes of the story, we have to really earn a way to like them more than we do Dracula, who, you know, as a huge Dracula fan, I tend to be on his side for most movies anyway, uh, whether it be the 1979 one with Frank Langella or any other time or that, that he exists. I'm like, I, I want him to kill everybody and take over Mina. You know, she's way more interesting than Jonathan in any version that we come across, or whatever version they want to call him, because they change their names throughout all the different Dracula movies. But that's besides the point, Bob. Stay on Castlevania here. Instead, we have Trevor Belmont as our vampire hunter, who we meet as a slovenly drunk who doesn't really want to do his family job because he's kind of treated like shit for it. Uh, by the end, we're almost kind of like him, but he's still kind of a jerk. He's voiced Richard Armitage from the Hobbit movies uh, as Thorin, but he's one of my favorite actors to watch, Matthew Fuhrer, as one of the evil asshole bishops of the church. Uh, who, as I said, are kind of the real bad guys in this. They're not listening to anybody. They're kind of putting their their iron fist upon Wakalia and wherever else they're going, which makes everyone unhappy. Uh, so now that they're out of the way by the end, it's not really a spoiler because you figure out that these guys are the bad guys, so they have to they have to end to set up for Dracula versus Trevor. So in this way, it is kind of a disappointment because you're not going to get what you want out of it. We do get some awesome creature designs. We get a Cyclops. We get a we get wolf version of Dracula, we get other monsters of the undead, but not to the effect that you would expect for Castlevania. This is an animated adaptation of the games, which I think works best because a lot of this might look silly or unconvincing if you made cheap with CGI or bad effects uh, in order to sell all these monsters and the way everyone moves. It's really it's very much in the style of anime, even though it was actually made by a New York-based and an Austin, Texas-based animation group. But it was not made by a Japanese company. It is based upon a Japanese woman's artwork. Ayama Kojima has been 
designing the Castlevania games since Symphony of the Night way back when, and her designs are the key focus of how everything looks here. And also with the way everything moves and the way the action sequences go and the blood, I mean, it's really anime influenced. Um, but the design does work for Castlevania, allows us to have some really amazingly designed creatures. The four episode series is written by Warren Ellis, who you know best as a graphic novel writer for Transmetropolitan, which I can never pronounce, and the short series Red, which is adapted into two films in the 2000s. Um, with this, we do have a darker edge uh, to us, and it's no surprise that Dracula is more of the hero than Trevor is, uh, and Trevor is unlikable, which often is a part of Ellis's writing. Uh, Ellis also has written various uh, movies and television shows, most notably probably Iron Man 3, which he wrote with Shane Black. Now the series itself is really entertaining. It's kind of a little bit all over the place because they're trying to set up so much. Um, most of it treat, treating itself pretty seriously. There are moments of dark, dark humor, which while I laugh, do seem slightly out of place because it doesn't really keep that up. It's more like a one-off joke or a weird cut. But it only happens like three times in there, so I'm not even sure it's meant to be funny. Uh, but, you know, it is, um, whether it's meant to be or not. We have set up for each of the characters, and we wonder where things will go from here. Uh, towards the end, we meet Alucard, who could really be someone of interest, but we don't see enough of him in order to truly judge him. So as we do meet everyone, we don't really have a climax. It kind of just ends. And that's an issue that we have here, is that, it's, as I said, it's all set up. Anyone watching and wanting us a complete movie are going to be let down, even as a complete series of first season. It doesn't stand on its own, it stands only as prologue, which I would rather have waited a year and get all 12 episodes at once, and whatever else will come afterwards, so we can get a full story. Instead, here's a tease, we'll see you next time. Uh, and it's a great tease, it looks great, it moves great, um, yeah, but it's not Whole, which is my main issue with Castlevania. So, but I, I am incredibly interested for the next time, and I do recommend you go watch it if you are interested in Castlevania and where. But just know that it's not going to actually end. It's just going to be an episode of a television show presented as a whole season of a television show. But for all means, check it out, and when you're done, go play Castlevania again. I know I am.